Hey everyone, it's Pastor Sarah. I'm back with my vlog, Faith at Home, Not Alone. And I'm looking forward to doing another season with you and exploring what does it mean to practice faith at home? How do we live this out? And I know some of us have had um, role models, parents, grandparents, maybe uh, church leaders or teachers who, who taught us some skills, but not everyone has had the experience of how do we live this out each and every day in our homes. So I wanna explore that more with you this season as we have another season of looking into what are some different ways that we can do this? What are some things we can be teaching our children? What are some things maybe that we need to grow in and learn as uh, parents who are trying to lead our children to follow Jesus, love God and love others? So let's start off another season. I'm gonna start with reading a little bit from Psalm 119. If you ever wondered if the Bible talks about the importance of reading the Bible, well, there are some passages and this is one of them. Uh, Psalm 119, 15 and 16. I will study your commandments and reflect on your ways I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. And then the most famous one from Psalm 119 is verse 105. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. And this month I wanted to talk about this word, biblical literacy. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, if it's a new concept for you. I think a lot of us, especially if we have children going to school or going back to school, we have heard that word literacy. That's a kind of a, a school word, a teacher word, the importance of our children learning to read, all the skills they need so they can read well. And reading is one of those life skills. It's, it's something important that we all need to have to be able to thrive, to, to do the things that we want to do in the world around us. And uh, I know when my kids were starting out in school, one of the big things they said was reading together. So even just reading stories, even if my children didn't know how to read, the fact that I was reading to them was a big thing. And I became really aware of the importance of literacy um, in some of the volunteer places that I had, had um, been working. One was an adult literacy program. And it really opened my eyes that not everybody learns to read in school. Some people, for whatever reason, um, they get passed over or they just didn't pick up those skills. And as adults, it really um, affects them. Uh, how, how to read signs, how to read labels on things, um, how to read the instructions that are needed uh, for work or for putting something together. Um, literacy really affects all areas of our life. So what about biblical literacy? Why is that important? What, is it, what does that even mean? Well, it's more than being able to just read the Bible. Again, as our children grow, they, they pick up those skills and they can actually read the Bible, but it's more than that. Um, it's, it's getting to understand what are some of the things that um, this Bible is all about. So one of the things is that the Bible is not actually one book, it's 66 books, and they're not even all books, some are letters, um, some are what we call gospels, some are history, some are poetry, there's wisdom literature, there's all kinds of um, different things that we can learn about the Bible. So understanding some of those things, knowing the key stories of the Bible. So again, the amazing thing is that the Bible, even though it's 66 different books, and it was written over 1,500 years. The amazing thing is that it's one cohesive story. It's God's story. And as God um, inspired the different authors to, to write these things, to put them together, to assemble them, um, that he was active in that process and that there's something important that he wants to tell us through this story. So it's knowing that this story is important. It's not just about 
um, knowing the story, but knowing that it's important for us, that it's important for our children, that this is where we find out about ourselves, um, our identity, our purpose, how we can have a relationship with God, what that relationship looks like, what God is even like. These are some huge things. And we ultimately want to know that God's story is our story. We want to know that all these stories are connected. There's a theme going on. There's actually multiple themes going on. But as we get into those stories, we get to delve into it deeper and it becomes so much richer. And it really makes sense as we as we get to know it more. So how many people are actually um, literate with the Bible? Well, that's probably a tough question to answer because as I was saying, it involves a whole bunch of different things. But even just the basic, the very first step of reading the Bible, how many people are doing that? And I was, I confess, a little shocked to find out that there was a study done back in 2013, so all, almost 10 years ago. Um, and they, they did a study with Canadian Christians and how much they read the Bible. And they found that only 11%, so this is almost 10 years ago, only 11% of Canadian Christians, that's not even other people, but Christians, were reading their Bible at least once a week. So just one time a week, at least, only 11%. And I have to say, um, that's a bit, shocking to me because the Bible is one of the key ways that we get to know who God is and our story and that so few people are actually reading it. So I think it's something that we want to uh, be thinking about how, how is this in my own life? Am I reading the Bible regularly as a parent? And because I want to be modeling faith, I want to be living it out. Um, am I being a, a role model of that? And am I reading the Bible with my children? And there are um, many options for, for reading because obviously um, the full Bible is a little too much for certain ages. We want to be age appropriate. And if you are going to be reading the Bible, I would say there's some key things like um, talking through some of the, the initial passages in Genesis, um, going to the Gospels, the stories of Jesus, those are some good ones to start with. But there's also a number of other ways we can do that. And I have some examples here. I've got um, a board book Bible. So again, talking about with our babies that we can be reading, our toddlers, our, our preschoolers, these are great ones with lovely pictures and just a simplified story. Uh, so that's a great option. Um, for ones that are a little older, older preschool, even early elementary. I love this Bible, Sally Lloyd-Jones, the Jesus Storybook Bible. And you can even find some um, videos of the stories being read on YouTube. So that's another great one. And then this one is a new one that just came out by N.T. Wright. It's called God's Big Picture Bible Story. And again, has lovely pictures, stories, um, and one of the neat things with this one, let me see if I can find one here. So we have the stories and then we have what else in God's big story links up with this. And there's some links to the other parts of the, of the Bible that connect to those stories. So as we read them, we can be reminded, oh yes, there, this, this reminds me of another story. And so that's right in there. I thought that was great. So thinking of our, our role as parents, I believe one of those is teaching our children biblical literacy. And that might mean that we have to learn biblical literacy. We have to grow in that as well. And don't worry if this is something, if your children are, are older and you feel like, oh, I've missed the bus, I would say it's never too late to start. We always can start where we're at and God is gracious, he gives us grace, and we can, uh, we can grow in it, and we can lead our children in that as well. So here are just a few ideas uh, to start with. One of them is maybe get to learn more about the Bible together. As I mentioned, there's 66 books in the Bible. 39 are in the Old Testament, 27 are in the New Testament. 
uh, explore them, kind of look up some of those names. What do we know about these names? Do we know anything about Hosea or Isaiah? Uh, what about first and second Kings? What kind, what kind of um, books are these? Are they a history? Are they wisdom? Do they have poetry in them? In the New Testament, there's a bunch that are letters. Uh, what does it mean that we, when we read a book in the Bible that's a letter? Well, it, it means that it's written to someone, it's written from someone, um, it's written in a time and a place. And uh, I have a, a link in my blog that takes you to a great fact page that you might want to check out so you can find out some more things. Another thing is reading the Bible together. And I, I already uh, mentioned this, but reading the stories together. And again, that's something that we can do each and every day. Uh, could be your morning routine, your bedtime routine. If there's a, a reading time that you have with your children, uh, have one of these, these kind of books with you. And, and one of the stories that you read is from there. And you might have some interesting talk conversations or you might not, but it's, it's just a way of, of growing in knowing this story. In one of my courses, we talked about wondering questions. I wonder, I wonder what that person was thinking in that story. I wonder, I wonder how they were feeling in that story. I wonder, I wonder what God was doing in that story. I wonder how God was at work. So some of the wondering questions that we can ask each other as we're reading the stories. And again, parents don't feel that you have to have the answers. None of us have all the answers. Uh, and it's okay to say, oh, that's a really good question. Let's see if we can find that out together, or I'll see if I can find out some more. Or maybe let's pray about that and ask God if he can give us some, some insight on that. Another way is memorizing parts of the Bible. And some people are find memorizing easier than others, but I think everybody can do this. Uh, I've talked about Bible memorization before. I find, for me, doing actions with it is very helpful. Uh, maybe doing a song, and you can find some different songs, verses to song. Um, but when we do that, we're actually slowing ourselves down, taking in a little bit of the Bible, and really reflecting on it as we say it over and over again. And I find I still do this practice of memorizing, um, and it's always very rewarding. Uh, it's such a rich time because as I'm memorizing it, I'm, I'm noticing things in, in it. There's certain words that stand out. I feel God, God's Holy Spirit is speaking to me um, through this verse and, and I, it's right there. It's right at the tip of my tongue so I, I can pull it up really quickly. I know one that I suggest as a kind of a, a great place to start is Psalm 23. And again, depending on the age of your child, you might want to just do one verse or even a half part of a verse. If they're older, you guys can work together and memorize the whole thing. Um, but thinking about this idea of God as our shepherd, and as we memorize it, reflecting on how is God being my shepherd? How is God shepherding you? How is God shepherding our family, our church? Um, using our imagination, picturing ourselves as the sheep, that God is, is caring for. And we also have the picture in the New Testament, John 10, of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. So if you don't want to do um, a psalm from the Old Testament, you might want to pick a verse or two from John 10 about Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Uh, another way, again, depending, we all have different ways of learning, um, and often we need all the different ways um, to get things in. So what about listening or listening to the Bible or watching Bible stories? Uh, as a way of, of hearing it, seeing it in a different way. Again, there's, there's certainly some children's versions of Bible stories that can be great. Um, another one is the Lumo Bible Project, and I have a link on the blog as well. And that, uh, they actually have each of the Gospels, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, and it's narrated. And it's all in chapter kind of parts, so you can watch a bit um, they're probably about maybe seven to nine minutes each chapter. And that can be a really interesting way to, to, to kind of get into the story, to hear it, to, to visualize it a bit more. 
So biblical literacy is a key way that we grow in our faith. Uh, I want to encourage you that, again, it's never too late to start. And there are some very simple, easy ways that you can start even today. So thank you for listening uh, and tuning in. And I look forward to being on this journey with you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, email me, sarah at onthejourney.ca. I'd love to hear from you. If there's other topics that you'd like to uh, hear more about, feel free to send those as well. And remember, we're practicing faith at home, but we're not alone. God has placed us in a family together. May you be encouraged this week.